Ever since Apple announced the M3 MacBook Pro 14 inch and the M3 MacBook Air, people have been asking me, when should they choose a MacBook Pro over a MacBook Air if you just want that standard M3 chip? And it's a good question. And I'd like to just try and answer that briefly in this video. Now, of course, we could do the in-depth comparison of the specs of the two machines, but in the real world, a lot of these things that you see on the spec sheets just don't matter as much as you think they're going to. So I thought I'd probably be able to share some experience here because uh, I've been using a MacBook Pro. Now, this is actually an M1 Max MacBook Pro, uh, but it is, of course, the same chassis that the M3 comes in with, the one difference being that uh, you don't get a Thunderbolt port on the right-hand side with the standard M3 MacBook Pro, but otherwise it's identical. And I've been using this for, what, two and a half years now. And since I bought the M3 Air, I've been using that pretty regularly as well. So uh, this is my work machine, which has now become quite locked down because of uh, security certifications that we have with um, the web studio that we run. So I bought the M3 Air as a personal laptop. So that's why I've got the two. And the first thing that I'll say is that using the M3 Air or the MacBook Pro actually doesn't feel any different. When I'm using the Air, I'm not thinking I'm missing something from the MacBook Pro and vice versa. So just bear that in mind. So all of these differences that people say are gonna be really important in the real world, maybe not so much. And of course, one of the key differences that people will point to with these machines is that the screen in the MacBook Pro is better. And that's absolutely true, it is. It's a mini LED display, so it's got much better contrast. The blacks are really black, uh, which is useful if you wanna hide the notch, if you don't like the notch on the display. Uh, that said, the contrast on the standard display is pretty good too. And the MacBook Air does a pretty good job of hiding the notch. It is fairly well hidden because I've got a black background on. And honestly, if I'm looking at that at the moment, I can't tell the difference. If I turn the brightness up to max, you can just about see uh, that the black isn't truly black, but otherwise it is very good. Of course, if you're watching HDR content, the mini LED display will go brighter for that. I don't personally watch a lot of HDR content, so I don't really notice the difference. In general use, they're just as bright as each other and they both look fantastic. Of course, there is a slight size difference when you look at the 14 inch versus the 13 inch side by side, and there is a slight resolution difference. But again, in real world use, when I'm using the MacBook Air, it feels the same to use in terms of dimensions as the MacBook Pro. Now, let me just call up uh, a web page a moment. I'm just going to get Twitter up on both screens because I want to also cover off the refresh rate of the display. So. This is a ProMotion display inside the MacBook Pro, so it's uh, adaptive in the refresh rate and it will go as high as 120 hertz. So if you're rapidly scrolling through content on a web page, uh, you can see a smoothness difference between the two. It's not gonna come through on camera, but here in the flesh, I can just about tell. I think a lot of people won't be able to tell the difference though. That's the thing. Where else would 120 hertz be useful? Well. You're not gonna watch video content at 120 frames per second. You're not gonna be playing games with the standard M3 chip at 120 frames per second. Not anything heavyweight anyway, because uh, it just doesn't have the power to do that. So I can't really see a massive benefit to having 120 hertz display, but if that's what you desperately want, then you'll have to go with the MacBook Pro. Obviously the speakers on this machine are much better than in the MacBook Air. It always blows me away, actually, the sound on the MacBook Pro. It's really good. Uh, the MacBook Air, though, is competent, I would say. Uh, it's perfectly decent. But they work in different ways. So on the MacBook Air, the speakers kind of fire out of this gap here uh, against the display and back at you, whereas on the MacBook Pro, you've got upward-facing speakers, and there's also a subwoofer. Uh, when it comes to keyboard and trackpad, um, there's no difference between the two in usage. They feel identical to use. There is a slight difference in I.O. and ports, and the main difference is that you get an SD card reader and an HDMI port on the MacBook Pro. So if those things are really important to you and you just can't tolerate the idea of having a dongle with the MacBook Air, then you'll need to go with the MacBook Pro. And I guess the other main difference is the size, and that's mainly the reason why you would consider going for an Air, I think. Um, I particularly wanted to have something that was a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter. Now, if I just put the two machines together like this and try and show them to the camera, you'll just get a, an idea there. The 14 inch is only slightly bigger 
than the MacBook Air. It is noticeably thicker and it is noticeably heavier, but it's not night and day different. You will probably appreciate the slight weight difference if you're always carrying your laptop around with you. And uh, you know, that might be important to you, but if you're mostly gonna have it on your desk, then it's not really a, a big deal, is it? So if that form factor is really important to you, you want the lightest possible laptop, then you're gonna go with the MacBook Air. When it comes to battery life, Again, the MacBook Pro is a bigger chassis, so it has more battery, so you should get a longer battery life. Um, but here in the real world, this lasts all day. So do you need more than that? Are you always gonna be out without your charger? In which case, maybe you do need to go for the MacBook Pro. But in the real world, does it make a meaningful difference? Mm, possibly not. I guess another area that we need to talk about is the thermal performance. The MacBook Air doesn't have a fan and the M3 chip isn't connected to the chassis in any meaningful way, so uh, it doesn't really have much in the way of cooling at all. Compared to the MacBook Pro, which is obviously a larger chassis, a better cooling system and it has an active fan as well, uh, which won't turn on very often. Really, to get these machines to the point where they're overheating and needing to thermally throttle, you do need to push them quite hard. Uh, for on a consistent basis as well. And I think probably the, the thing that's most likely to do that is gaming, or, or if you're doing a render from a video edit, something like that, that's where you've got a sustained load on the chip, which causes it to heat up. But most tasks don't work like that. You have bursts of performance, and then uh, the CPU will be idling for a bit. And in those kind of scenarios, the MacBook Air will do just as well as the MacBook Pro. Just one thing to mention is if you have it shut, and connected to an external display that further degrades the thermal performance of the MacBook Air. Now I have seen some people will take the bottom off and they'll put thermal heat pads on to connect the M3 chip with the chassis. So it effectively uses the bottom of the laptop as a heat sink and that does help performance, um, but are you gonna want to do that? I don't know what that will do to your warranty, so that's something to consider. When it comes to the actual spec itself, I think the sweet spot is the one that I bought, which is, um, the 16 gigs of RAM and 512 storage, and you get the full fat uh, M3 chip with that. There is also an option with eight gigs of RAM and 512 storage with the full fat chip. And what I mean by full fat chip is that uh, on the entry level 13 inch model, you lose two GPU cores. So just be aware of that. Uh, again, for the type of people that are buying that model, it probably won't make any difference, but you need to know that. Uh, so at 1300 pounds, if you're only doing general computing tasks, browsing the web, bit of office work, that kind of thing, going to university or college and taking notes, um, the eight gigs will do just fine. Um, but if you're going to do some more professional creative tasks, like occasionally I'm editing photos, I'm doing a bit of recording, uh, music with Logic Pro, I might edit the odd video on this laptop, uh, in which case you really do want 16 gigs of RAM. When it comes then to specking up the storage, would I take it much beyond the terabyte? Probably not. Um, if you're looking at this and you're specking up, I don't know, huge amounts of storage with it, you've got to really want this smaller form factor for that to make sense because you're getting up to the price point where it just makes more sense to go with a MacBook Pro or potentially a MacBook Pro with a previous generation chip in it, but like an M2 Pro or an M1 Pro, you might be able to find a refurb or even new old stock versions of those notebooks for the same sort of money, in which case those might make sense. So if you're in the market for a MacBook Air and you're focused solely on performance, then you're probably in the market for the wrong notebook and you want a MacBook Pro. Uh, if you're in the market for a MacBook Air and you really want the best ultra portable, all round general purpose notebook that can actually really stretch its legs and turn its uh, hand to creative workflows, the MacBook Air is a brilliant machine. But will you notice those differences between the form factor? Yes, if you put these two side by side, you can tell the difference, but when you're using them in isolation, which is how we use our computers, we don't typically use two at once, uh, well then you're never gonna notice those differences. I don't think the differences in the screen are really that important for most people in the target market for these notebooks. So hopefully those uh, viewpoints helped if you're in the market for one of these machines and you're making those decisions. I'll pop some links in the description for the latest deals on Amazon. Of course, if you do use any of those links and buy anything, it doesn't cost you anything more, but the channel does earn a small commission and every little helps. 
Uh, I'd be very interested to know what you think. Um, have you got any sort of reasons for going for MacBook Air over MacBook Pro or vice versa? Let me know in the comments section. Has this been helpful at all? Uh, please let me know. And if you've got any questions, uh, fire away. I'll do my best to answer those either in the comments section or in a future video. Uh, thanks as always for supporting the channel and see you again soon for some more Geekery.